This is a clip from the Chris Wright Show podcast. Fruit, uh, kiwi, banana, strawberry. Uh, they didn't really have coconut uh, that that much around those days, but uh, yeah, I, I, I just it just kind of worked out in the lyrics. Sometimes those words just. <laughs> I mean, I had juice on the brain, so it, it worked its way into the, the the song. So it wasn't okay. So not semen. Uh, was it? It was not steroids either, correct? Oh gosh, no. That that's a great one though. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't thought of that one. No one's to, ever thought of that just one. Trying to think of I juice. Mean, it, it could be. Yeah, it can be anything. Really. I mean, it's not. It wasn't meant to refer to any one type of juice. Just all the juices that you can think of. Even like a a juicy homemade ground burger. Uh, I want to apologize because it seems like earlier when I said uh, my buddy Chris Singer's name, you made like a oh sound. So I thought maybe you might have thought I said the N word, which is uh, not the oh. ca- not the case. That is just his name. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't think oh, okay, that. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've had that. I've had that problem happen before. Like, cause that's. Oh no, no, I didn't think that at he's all. Got, he's got a name that kind of sounds like that when you just slur it off what's your tongue. What's his name? Uh, Chris Singer. What's what's his nickname? He doesn't. Have, oh, Doctor Pong Fong. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that's what I was saying yeah. all about. Oh, okay. He actually does, Pung Fung does weird uh, noise music, I guess you would call it. And he actually introduced oh, okay. me. Yeah, he introduced me to, uh, I got to see Nautical Almanac and Wolf Eyes. Oh, wow. Which, which is pretty cool. I think you, Was that uh, in, in Chicago? No, that was here. Uh, Nautical Almanac was in Indianapolis a oh, while, nice. while ago. And uh, Wolf Eyes was in Lexington, Kentucky. Okay, cool. Well, those are, I'm sure, were very good shows. Yeah, I know you have some sort of affiliation with uh, Twig and all that. Yeah, I went to high school with him uh, in Ann Arbor and um, some other members of uh, Wolf Eyes also went to my high school, well, Nate Young specifically. Uh, but then uh, the other founding member, uh, Aaron Dolloway, he uh, was also living in Ann Arbor uh, or spending a lot of time there around those same high school years. And my, my high school was actually right downtown in Ann Arbor. It's called Com- Community High School. Um, so it was very close to a lot of these stories that we're talking about. It was a very small town, but it was very uh, rich. Like there was a lot of experience to be had even in these smaller areas. So it was dense and syrupy with uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, very impactful moments for me that shaped my 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 life really yeah those those shows are an experience they're, they're quite strange and you don't know you don't really know that you're going to enjoy it until you find yourself in the middle of the one and you don't know how to feel you yeah know? exactly that's but, a good feeling for sure not yeah. knowing how to feel is a, a, a very intense feeling um and I, yeah that kind of brings me to this question which i didn't really want to ask you but i feel like i have to uh i'll explain it to anyone who's listening uh, there's this weird Steve Mike conspiracy thing, if you want to call it that, that surrounds uh, Andrew W.K., and it basically is the that he is not himself. He is created by a machine of some sort, and that he is not who you think he is and all this weirdness. Like, what the fuck is that, man? I mean, I think well, the, the, <laughs> like, the, 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 the short <laughs> story would that? be just, I think a lot of uh, just people, you know, taking a small idea of you know a small fact or a small piece of truth and then sort of running with it in the complete opposite direction and what's the word when when someone's mind runs away with itself you know what i mean it's like uh yes i did work with managers i still do uh yes i did work with universal music group and uh, a great team of you know industry professionals but that doesn't mean that they they formed me, you know what I mean, out of out of nothing. I mean, I am well, one of the a other, person and all that. One of the other, like, I guess, conspiracies that went along with it is uh, that you were replaced such as, like, much like uh, Paul McCartney, like a Paul is dead type thing. Yeah, I mean, it's just completely absurd. I think that that's probably someone <laughs> just heard that thing about the Beatles or whoever and just... Uh, again, just ran ran with that for whatever reason. I think a lot of it started from the early days when there was a lot of doubt or almost just sort of animosity towards me or more my offerings. And people, for whatever reason, didn't know what to think, so they lashed out, about, lashed out at it in these certain ways. And 
I mean, I did come from a place where working with a team of people would have really been looked down upon. So, I mean, it, believe me, it made me dealing with some of these accusations, not so much anymore, because I just sort of let it go in a way, but in the early days especially, it just, it, 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 was, it was torturous. It drove me up the wall. And I think that's probably what these people wanted to happen. They wanted to get under my skin, and they did. They succeeded. Um, and the part that was very frustrating is, is it was hard to refute or even engage with these kinds of rumors or accusations or even to defend oneself because it only just added more fuel to the fire. So I tried all different kinds of ways of dealing with it, and I had a lot of good guidance from people that had been through similar things and, uh, and then some maybe not so good advice, but I do take responsibility for following it. And in the end, uh, you know, it's just it is what it is. I just tried to uh, focus on the, the fun stuff and, and let the other stuff go. Well, like you said, you said at a lecture, I'm not the guy you've seen from the I Get Wet album. I'm not that same person. I don't just mean that in a philosophical or conceptual way. I'm not, the, I'm just not, it's not the same person at all. Like, how do you say well, something that was, like that and not expect that was, Again, I, mean, I take, I, I realize like it's, it's sort of stupid or whatever, but I, I took a lot of advice, um, especially in, like moments for me, which were like a personal crisis, I was also dealing with a lot of just sort of unrelated or semi-related business complications and, and contracts and things like that. That I, again, that I always take responsibility. I, I signed those contracts. Nobody forced me or tricked me or manipulated me into doing that. It was choices I made. I may have asked someone's advice or opinion, and maybe I made a bad decision based on I mean, yeah, maybe they were trying to manipulate or get me to do something that I shouldn't have done, but I should have asked for a second opinion by, you know, some other lawyer or some other person that had experience. I was very inexperienced in everything, you know, not just in the music world or entertainment or I was just inexperienced. From the Chris Break Show Podcast.